Well, you know, there's one problem every bus converter has to solve, and that is, how do we lock the front door? Most school buses don't come with locks. Heck, they don't even come with a way to shut the door from the outside, usually. And over the past seven years, we've tried every trick in the book, with varying degrees of success, to give people a door that locks, that's safe, and still is kind of fun, you know? In this video, I'm gonna show you my favorite way to solve this issue, and that's by building a custom door. There are a lot of things I could tell you about building a custom door for a school bus, but the first and most important is that this opening we're trying to fill is not square, and it never was. That's okay, because our technique involves building the door in place to fit the opening. And that starts by squaring up and putting in a piece of steel right here to mount our hinge on. We like to use uh, commercial door hinges. They're made of aluminum. They have a continuous gear that runs the full length. And it's just out of the box, they're capable of handling a 200 pound door. Our door is not gonna weigh anywhere near that. I think we'll finish between 40 and 60 pounds, but that's the kind of overbuilt strength we need for something that's gonna be on the road. Next, we will mount the hinge on our piece of steel here. And then from that hinge, we will actually weld in our steel frame, making it in place across the top, down the sides and the bottom. We'll put spacers in to get our gaps set just right. And then once our frame is made, we'll skin that up, install the hardware, and then rehang the door in place. And it'll have the perfect openings all around it. Okay, well here we are on day number two of the custom front door build. And um, what I wanna do is kinda of bring you in and show you some of the details happening right now at this phase of the construction process um, to show you how we go about constructing these custom made doors and openings that are often really far from being square. Um, it's, the method we have is something that I'm actually maybe even a little bit proud of. And it's something that me and Ty have worked on and really perfected over the years. And uh, I was just talking to Ty and he says it's something anybody can do. So how about that? So I'm gonna bring you in here and uh, give you some close-ups around the opening and explain what you're looking at and tell you why we're doing it like this. And uh, you know, if you have the guts to whip out the welder and try making your own door, hopefully this will be really helpful for you. The first thing that we did is we welded on a piece of 16 gauge, one by two rectangular steel tubing to the door jam here. And this is, this is that piece. And if you look, see how there's a gap in daylight here? That's because this whole side of the door has a bit of a smile to it. It's curved like this. And that's obviously gonna be a problem because our hinge here needs to be on a perfectly straight plane. Um, so what we've done is we've got spacers in there, welded into place. And then I'm gonna come back in and I'm not sure exactly how I wanna fill this gap. If we wanna to try to get some more weld in there or maybe do Bondo or some kind of filler there or maybe a piece of steel, that's kind of to be determined. But once we have a straight, you know, reference edge for our hinge, we go ahead and we install our hinge. And this is a, a geared style hinge. I don't know what the actual term for it is. It's made by a company called Roton. And uh, it's a commercial door hinge. It has a rating of 200 pounds um, as is, and you can actually reinforce it somehow to hold up an even heavier door. But our doors weigh around, I think 60 pounds or so usually. Uh, moving around, you can see, so we've got our, our door frame is actually inch and a quarter uh, 16 gauge steel tube. And this steel tube we went ahead and attached to our hinge and that's where we start from. So we've got our uh, one by two rectangular tube, our hinge, and then the beginning of our door frame. And that gets attached to the hinge. And then from there, we start cutting the pieces for our door frame and clamping them in place. And if you'll notice here, this tape it's actually holding on uh, one eighth inch spacers so that as we stick all of these pieces of steel in place, we can maintain a nice even reveal all the way around our door frame, despite the fact that this door frame is far from square. So we're basically gonna build this entire frame in place. And you can see down here, 
that's the final piece to go in. And once we have them all in place and clamped up nicely like we like them, um, we'll go ahead and weld them together, zip it up nice and strong, and then we'll actually remove the door from the bus, put it on the bench, and that's where we'll finish uh, in installing the skin, the insulation, the window, and the latch. And then once that's all done, we'll bring it back over. And it's always a little exciting, but it's always worked. We'll hang the door back on and it should be completed and fill this unsquare opening very nicely with even reveals all around. It's just that easy. Alrighty, so Ty just turned off the welder and uh, you can see here we've got our door frame. Just floating in the breeze here and uh, it looks really great. And I'll show you here, you can see our gap is nice and consistent all the way down the door frame. And that's because where the tape is, we had these little spacers taped in place. Those are eighth inch spacers. So now that we've got this all welded up and zipped up, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew it from the hinge and take it over to the bench where we will skin this up with our 18 gauge galvanized, put some insulation in it, um, install the latch, put the window up here, and then we'll bring it back over for final install. Ty's been hard at work the last couple of days working on this door and I apologize, I haven't done the best job of keeping up with all of his hard work because I've been working on other projects on the shop. But before we take this thing off the table and go to hang it up on my bus, I wanna walk you around the door and show you the work that he's done to get us ready for this point and um, give you some little tips if this is a project you wanna take on yourself, things to look out for and uh, some steps you can do that might help you. This particular door is gonna be getting a, uh, a keyless, oh, like that, there we go, RV latch. And what's interesting or nice about this one is it's actually got one of those beep, 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 beep clickers. I've never even had a car with that. So <clears throat> that's gonna go just like that. This is the, actually the inside face of the door. But um, Ty's got our openings made here in the uh, door frame and then gone in and countersunk for the uh, screws that actually hold the latch in place. So I'm pretty excited to have that on my bus. It means uh, if I go out, I don't have to take keys with me because I've got a number pad, which is really nice. So moving around the bus, you can see, or moving around the door, you can see uh, our inch and a quarter 16 gauge frame that we made in place. And just to give you an idea, this table's flat and you see how the, the uh, door frame is actually coming off the table, that's because the opening that we built this door to fit in is that far out of square. We didn't build that door frame. That was, <laughs> that was how it came from Thomas. So um, we leave our frames open on the bottom so that any moisture or whatever can drain out. And then here's a little thing, when you're riveting the skid on, you wanna space your rivets out so that you don't have the potential for obtrusions there. Right now, it's uh, not an issue, but those rivets, when they come in, they're actually quite a bit longer and then they get pulled back. So uh, if you don't offset your rivet holes, you're gonna find that your rivets uh, slam into each other and you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to rivet this together. So we've got, here's our, a good view of our sandwich. We've got our 18 gauge galvanized skin on the inside. This is our inch and a quarter, 16 gauge steel tube frame. And then on the outside, it's another layer of 18 gauge galvanized steel. It's all riveted together. And um, here in the door opening, you can see we've got our insulation that's in it. Um, what's gonna go in the window opening is this guy here. This is a, uh, a dual pane insulated tinted RV window that uh, has a built-in screen. And it's very nice because it's essentially just a, another fully functioning window for your bus. You can cruise with the window open or park, you know, you know all the things you can do with the window. So here we are, we are ready to hang it up. And uh, the next shot you're gonna see is us uh, wrestling this guy into place. We need to be open more probably, huh? That's about the height of the one, for sure. Is 
top one in if we move a little bit. Come on in and I guess we'll up just to straight. Oh, even down a little bit maybe. Just a little bit, huh? Yeah. Keep walking the bottom of the There we go. Yeah, a little lower. There we go. This part's pretty close. Oh, pretty yeah. Pretty close. Close to get him going. Okay. Lower than a little. Lower? Just here. I mean, maybe I can get him in. You get a couple started now. Give you just, just need to, to settle down a little bit. <laughs> settle down. Settle down now. Screws. Settle down. Okay. 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 Okay.
keypad thing and I've got a key fob so it's keyless. How cool is that? And you can see where that goes in here. Um, that's the, the door jam opening. Now, I wanted to touch on one of my favorite products and that is what we use here for the seams. So it's got this, um, it's called a bulb here and this is called uh, edge lock and I'll pull off a piece for you. So what we do We've got a piece of a half inch angle that's welded in and that becomes our doorstop. And in this, if you look at it, the cross section, boom, that snaps in over and then you've got a bulb here for sealing against. So I like it because it doesn't use adhesives. It goes on real solid and that just goes up and around the opening there for a really a fantastic fit and I'll, I'll even see if it captures here so boom and you can see where it just seals up really nice and tight along that door and then down here at the bottom once I have my final stair built I'll put another piece of that edge bulb or edge lock side bulb edge lock <laughs> right there and that'll give me a really nice, uh, nice seal. Oops. But it's looking really sharp, gotta say. Especially taking it all in. A guy likes it. I'll be using this a lot. You know, if the way a door closes is any indication of how well it's been made, I think we got ourselves a mighty fine door. I couldn't be more pleased with how this one turned out. Maybe one of our best doors yet. I don't know. And yeah, add in the fact that I'm officially living in the 21st century now. <laughs> Boy, does it get any better? I don't know. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Thanks again for tuning in and following me as I build this bus out for myself and show you all the things I've learned and all my time building out schoolies for other people. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can catch my newest videos as they come out. And if you like this video, make sure you tune in for the live chat that's following it if you're watching the premiere. Otherwise, you can just click on the live chat and watch a replay of it. But uh, join me for those live chats because that's where I'll be answering whatever questions you want to throw at me live, in person, live on YouTube. It's a good chance to connect with me and other people and you know, just give me a piece of your mind. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.